would you do to enhance and repair education funding and processes in South Dakota? Well, good question. Thank you. Awesome. Couple things. Number one, I take a look at the three percent uh, cap on the districts. Okay, that doesn't work, and I can tell you it doesn't work. We're taking 152, 151 school districts throughout the state. And we're doing a broad brush, and we're saying, well, it's going to work well for all all those school districts. All right. Well, when I talk to Tim Mitchell in Rap City, um, he's got declining enrollment. He's got lower assessed valuation on the properties. He's got he can't opt out because his his uh, basically his cons conservative base is when you're not opting out. Now working there, this is the second year that they're going into their reserves to pay for to keep the schools afloat, even with the bump that the legislature gave. Now, and if you go to Sioux Falls, working well in Sioux Falls, because what's happening is the uh, yeah, the uh, PSA, the uh, per student, student allocation, is going up. You got more students enrolling. They've got better prop, uh, better assessed valuations, and in addition to that, they've allowed their their, their constituency and allowed them to opt out. Working well there. So we need to take a look at that first. What will you do to enhance and repair education funding and processes in South Dakota? Thank you. <coughs> when people ask why I decided to run for governor, uh, I about decided that um, I, I think I started thinking in terms of doing that in, in the budget cut year because. The choice was presented as uh, it, that we had no choice. The gun is to our head. You have no choice. Everybody has to share in the pain. And that was absolutely wrong. By the time we were done with that budget year, we cut $127 million of general funds from the budget, plus a whole lot more millions in federal money. And by the time that fiscal year was over, over collections of over budgeting and uh, under, I said that backwards, under budgeting and revenue and over budgeting and expenses, we had the entire $127 million um, so that we wouldn't have had to have cut a penny and we still would have made it through that year. Now, I'm not saying I could work wonders, but the narrative has to be changed out there. Education does not have an advocate out there. And, and the only way that we can change the narrative is by changing the balance of power. The Republicans have such an extreme supermajority that the decisions are all made behind closed doors. They're not made in open committee meetings. And, um, and it's, it's a matter of changing the narrative so that when people pop up on the House floor and talk about you know, growing reserves and overpaid administrators, Someone from their own party will have the nerve to stand up and say, that is wrong. That is factually incorrect. We, uh, and depending on how far you want to get into those two particular details, they are absolutely incorrect. The last thing that I do is, well, I'd look for better efficiencies to create better efficiencies and see if we can get some more money there. We need to look at the sustainability of all this. That's the important part. So if, if, if all else failed, we got down to the end there, I'd support uh, or look at and support and give to the voters the opportunity to vote on a 1% tourist tax for four months and, and, and uh, raise some, some funds for education. Okay. So that's my solution to it. But understand, I'm not a, tax and spend, a, a, a guy that raises taxes. All I'm saying to you is at this point, what I would do is, Give it to the voters. Let the voters decide if they would support. They want this kind of service for their kids, and they want to see education improved. We've looked at everything else, and I'd say, okay, it's up to you folks. One percent tourist tax for uh, for four months out of the year. Vote up. Thank you. Thank you, Um, as far as oh, ch changing priorities. But that won't work wonders. That won't be enough. As far as any additional revenue, um, you know, we tried that two years ago, and all of the powers in this state, the South Dakota retailers, both of the farm organizations, 
the South Dakota Chamber of Commerce and Industry, even though they understand, when they're here, they see, they, they understand those issues, but they nevertheless fought with, with several inaccuracies themselves in that campaign and finally swayed it. And until you have the buy-in of the lobbying groups that spend their time and, and money in here, um, that, that won't be successful unless we can get those big groups to stand up for what's right for education. Susan, you can keep the podium. Yes. Leaders deal with people. Managers deal with things. And, and when you're talking about leadership, you're talking about leadership, you see the organization as it, it, it could be. And you have to be able to articulate and create buy-in from the people and on that vision, right? I've done that.